Imagine crossing an elephant with a manatee and giving it the lifestyle of a seal. Desmostylians were one of the more puzzling groups of extinct marine mammals that lived along the North Pacific from roughly the Oligocene through the late Miocene tens of millions of years ago. These ancient Pacific coast dwellers had teeth so unique that scientists are still debating what they actually ate and a body plan so bizarre that no one can agree on their evolutionary relationships. Recent discoveries from the Akan site in Hokkaido showing multiple genera coexisting and diagnostic specimens found in museum collections are finally starting to crack this paleontological mystery that has scattered fossil fragments across an entire ocean basin. Picture a paleontologist standing on a windswept beach in Japan holding a massive skull fragment. The bone combines features seen in whales, proboscideans and sirenians, so scientists struggle to classify it. This scene has played out dozens of times over the past century as researchers discovered fossil fragments that refuse to fit into neat evolutionary categories. For over 100 years, researchers have been uncovering these mysterious bones along Pacific coastlines. The fossils were so bizarre that early paleontologists couldn't agree on basic classification. Some insisted they were looking at ancient whales that had somehow developed elephant-like features. Others argued for primitive elephants that had taken to the sea. A few desperate researchers even suggested they might be giant sloths that had learned to swim. The breakthrough came when scientists stopped treating these finds as isolated curiosities and started mapping their global distribution. The fossils span the entire North Pacific Rim from Japan and Russia through the Aleutians and Alaska to the west coast of North America. The pattern became clear once researchers plotted discovery sites on ancient maps showing where coastlines existed during the Miocene epoch. Each region preserves different parts of the Desmostylian story with remarkable consistency. Japanese sites like Akan yield massive skulls and some of the largest paleoparadoxia material known, providing crucial taxonomic insights. California's fossil beaches produce isolated teeth showing incredible variation in dental structure within single populations. Alaska's remote deposits contain specialized jaw fragments that demonstrate unique feeding adaptations for processing tough marine vegetation. This distribution across the North Pacific suggested coastal dispersal and repeated occurrences along the rim, not random scatter. The animals were widespread along Pacific coasts, hinting at long-range coastal dispersal, but remaining tied to nearshore habitats. Some researchers infer coastal movements, but direct evidence for seasonal migrations is limited. The scattered fossil record across three continents proves that Desmostylians dominated Pacific coastal ecosystems for over 20 million years. They weren't evolutionary accidents, but highly successful marine mammals that developed specialized adaptations. Yet the most puzzling aspect of these creatures wasn't their strange bones or mysterious lifestyle, but something far more fundamental to their survival. Their feeding apparatus consisted of teeth that looked like bundles of tiny concrete pillars. Each tooth contained multiple columnar cusps arranged in tight clusters that resembled miniature organ pipes more than traditional grinding surfaces. The individual columns stood vertically like tiny skyscrapers creating a dental landscape that looked more architectural than biological. These bizarre dental structures created complete taxonomic chaos in the scientific community. Some specimens were classified as ancient tapers based on their grinding potential. Others were labelled as primitive whales due to their marine context. A few confused paleontologists even suggested they belonged to oversized rodents that had somehow adapted to coastal living. The confusion was so widespread that single fossil sites contained teeth assigned to completely different animal groups. The columnar design presented a functional mystery that seemed to defy basic principles of mammalian feeding. Traditional mammalian teeth rely on broad, flat surfaces for grinding or sharp edges for cutting. How could these seemingly inefficient bundles of pillars actually process food effectively? Biomechanical and dental comparisons indicate the columnar teeth were effective for grinding and crushing consistent with a herbivorous diet that included hard or abrasive coastal vegetation. Fossil tooth wear and morphology show that these columnar cusps were capable of producing many contact points for heavy grinding and show wear patterns consistent with processing abrasive coastal plants. Different paleoparadoxid genera show variation in cusp pattern and enamel thickness, which researchers use to infer differences in diet and tooth function. Microscopic examination of fossilized teeth shows distinctive wear patterns indicating both crushing and cutting actions. These animals could process everything from soft kelp fronds to tough seagrass roots with equal efficiency. 
Studies suggest they could handle tough, abrasive marine plants such as kelp and seagrass food sources that are common in their fossil-bearing coastal deposits. These columnar teeth represent precision-engineered tools that allowed desmostylians to exploit a food source no other large mammal could access. They had solved how to be successful herbivores in ocean environments where most plants are either too small or too abrasive for conventional mammalian digestion. But understanding their teeth was just the beginning of unravelling the desmostylian mystery. In 2025, researchers working at the Akan site in Hokkaido made a discovery that would rewrite our understanding of Desmostylian evolution. They found two completely different species living in the same ancient coastal environment separated by millions of years of evolutionary divergence, yet sharing the same prehistoric beaches. The Akan material comes from the same horizon, but the site's sedimentology raises the possibility that some bones were reworked, so the finds suggest but do not conclusively prove true living coexistence. The Akan specimens represent the first time scientists have found multiple Desmostylian genera coexisting in the same geological layer. The sample includes specimens AMP AK 96024 1, assigned to Neoparadoxia spi, along with AMP AK 97025 3 and AMP AK 000247, assigned to Paleoparadoxia spi. This discovery provided unprecedented insight into how these creatures diversified and competed for resources in Miocene coastal waters. Previous fossil sites had only yielded single species, leading researchers to assume Desmostylians were solitary giants that dominated their environments without competition. The discovery created a significant problem for paleontologists. These finds force a careful reassessment of paleoparadoxide taxonomy and show mosaic morphologies that blur the diagnostic characters previously used to separate genera. Akan specimens show a mix of features of both paleoparadoxia and neoparadoxia, which is exactly why the authors call for taxonomic reassessment rather than confident species level naming. Specimen AMP AK 96024 1 revealed a massive neoparadoxia with a skull so large it rivals the biggest fossil elephants ever discovered. The bone structure was robust and heavily built with thick skull walls designed to withstand enormous mechanical stress. Meanwhile, the Paleoparadoxia specimens from the same deposits showed more gracile features with delicate bone architecture, suggesting completely different feeding strategies and lifestyle adaptations. Size and skull shape differences in the Akan material strongly suggest niche partitioning, one genus built for high bite force, the other for more selective cropping, but species level ecological roles remain tentative because the material is fragmentary. Chemical analysis of surrounding sediments revealed the Akan site was once a rich estuarine environment with diverse marine vegetation. This habitat provided enough resources to support multiple large herbivore species without direct competition. The Akan discovery proves that Desmostylians had undergone rapid evolutionary radiation during the Middle Miocene, creating complex coastal ecosystems supporting multiple species of giant aquatic herbivores unlike anything existing today. But their remarkable success would not last forever. During the Miocene epoch, oceans teemed with diverse marine mammals. Desmostylians lived alongside primitive whales which had already fully adapted to life in the water, possessing more streamlined bodies and a diet focused on animals, fish or plankton. Unlike whales, Desmostylians remained tied to coastal areas and shallow waters, demonstrating a distinct specialization in their habitat. Another fascinating comparison is with their terrestrial contemporaries such as ancient elephants proboscideans. While they shared some traits like large skulls and robust bone structures, Desmostylians were fundamentally different in their habitat and bodily function. While ancient elephants evolved to eat land plants, Desmostylians adapted their teeth and skeletal structure to exploit marine vegetation. When compared to modern animals, there is no direct equivalent to a Desmostylian. Manatees and dugong sirenians are the closest living aquatic herbivores. However, they have elongated bodies and primarily use their tails for propulsion, whereas Desmostylians had a more robust build with four limbs that could help them move both on land and in the water. 
Their dentition was also completely different. Cyrenians have flat grinding teeth while Desmostylians had their unique columnar teeth. Seals and sea lions pinnipeds are marine mammals that can come ashore, but they are carnivores, which is the complete opposite of Desmostylians. This comparison highlights the Desmostylians' unique evolutionary strategy, a large herbivorous mammal that lived both in and out of the water, an ecological role that no animal today occupies. The combination of features from elephants, manatees and seals made Desmostylians a singular evolutionary experiment, a separate branch with no surviving descendants and a testament to the incredible diversity of life in the past. By the late Miocene, roughly within the 11.5 million years ago, window Desmostylians had completely vanished from the fossil record, though the exact timing remains sensitive to taxonomic uncertainty. The story of their extinction begins with a paradox. These supremely adapted marine herbivores disappeared just as ocean productivity was reaching new heights during parts of the late Miocene. The timing of their extinction coincides with the rise of modern marine mammal groups suggesting a complex interplay of climate change competition and ecological displacement that sealed their fate. This wasn't a sudden catastrophe, but a gradual squeeze that lasted several million years as the world around them transformed. The background research reveals two different diversity peaks, Desmostylids near the Oligocene-Miocene boundary and Paleoparadoxids during the middle Miocene climatic optimum, and both groups declined during subsequent global cooling showing a clear climate diversity link. The middle Miocene climatic optimum had created perfect conditions for Desmostylian diversification. Warm seas supported extensive kelp forests and rich coastal vegetation that fed their specialized diet. Global temperatures began cooling during the middle Miocene climate transition and ocean currents shifted dramatically. Coastal habitats transformed as cold water upwelling patterns changed, fragmenting the continuous kelp forest ecosystems Desmostylians depended on. The once reliable food sources became patchy and unpredictable, forcing these large animals to travel greater distances between feeding areas. Early Cyrenians like dugongs and manatees were expanding their range into Pacific waters during this same period, competing directly with Desmostylians for the same marine plant resources. These smaller, more efficient herbivores could survive on lower quality vegetation and required less food per individual than their giant competitors. Their extreme specialization for coastal herbivory helped them dominate for millions of years, but left them vulnerable once those coastal ecosystems shifted and competitors expanded. Recent beach finds on the Oregon coast show that new specimens continue to arrive and even a single tooth can be a key piece of the puzzle. The extinction of Desmostylians represents one of evolution's great trade-offs. Their incredible specialization made them masters of Miocene coastal ecosystems, but left them unable to adapt when those ecosystems disappeared. Their story demonstrates how even the most successful evolutionary experiments can become footnotes in Earth's vast biological history. In today's popular culture, the presence of Desmostylians is virtually non-existent, especially when compared to other famous extinct creatures like the T-Rex or mammoths. They're often overlooked in films, books, and television shows about the prehistoric world. On rare occasions, Desmostylians might appear in specialized documentaries or works of science fiction. They could be featured in documentaries about the Miocene epoch or educational programs on the evolutionary history of mammals. However, their image is generally not widely recognized. There are no iconic Desmostylian characters in cartoons or comics, nor are they the focus of popular toys or video games. This lack of a presence might be due to their status as an enigmatic and difficult to classify group of animals with no clear ties to any modern species. This makes it challenging to create a familiar and accessible image for the general public. Each fossil discovery adds crucial evidence to this global detective story spanning millions of years and thousands of miles. The Akan Specimens Museum collections, Alaska finds, and coastal discoveries all help rewrite our understanding of these remarkable creatures through international scientific collaboration. Scientists now see Desmostylia as a diverse, widespread North Pacific experiment in marine herbivory whose rise and fall were closely linked to climate and coastal change. They were regionally important members of Miocene coastal ecosystems, and their taxonomy is still being revised as new specimens emerge. Which discovery surprised you most? Would you like a follow-up deep dive into one specific specimen or site? The next unexpected fossil might already be rolling ashore at a Pacific beach. Someone just needs to spot it.